Halo has had an extensive modding community since the beginning of time, or at least the beginning of Halo being a franchise. Seriously though, over the course of two decades of Halo existing, whether it was some OG mods from the Halo custom edition days, to some of the crazy newer stuff that's been included in MCC since the PC release, there's been some incredible things that have been made that just take Halo and flip it on its head. We're talking the best of the best from some of the most obscure things to some of the more popular ones. And some of these go way back in time that like might unlock this like nostalgic nugget you didn't even know existed. So these are our picks for the greatest Halo mods of all time. But first, thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. If you don't know about HelloFresh, they deliver fresh pre-portioned meals right to your doorstep. No more shopping or meal planning with HelloFresh's affordable meal plan. The easiest way to get restaurant quality meals right in the comfort of your own home. No more walking down the aisle at the grocery store and looking for all the items you need. And HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping or even takeout. So it's a win-win for your wallet and taste bud. Look, I know it can be kind of busy trying to have everything you need right there and then, but with HelloFresh, it's super easy to enjoy a delicious meal. They specifically have quick and easy meal categories that have meals pre-selected that are ready in less than 30 minutes. Also, if you're a picky eater, they have a variety of meals that they offer. You can customize your own meals before they get shipped to you, even upgrading or adding proteins and even changing out sides for calorie smart or carb smart options. HelloFresh only uses quality ingredients that come from farms and get shipped right to your doorstep in less than a week, ensuring that everything stays fresh and high quality. And if you love snacking every now and then, there's also HelloFresh Market that offers a range of snacks, sides, desserts, and more. You can just add any of those to your weekly delivery alongside your meals. So if that sounds interesting, why wait? Sign up today, use our link down below and upgrade your eating experience. Okay, so just to start things off, I wanna get a good scope of what we're doing for this video. So we're going all the way back in time. I need you guys to imagine the year is like 2006. YouTube is brand new. Then all of a sudden, this video pops up in your recommended called Zelda Ocarina of Time on Halo Custom Edition. And you have no idea what it is, and you click on it and it is one of the most incredible things you've ever seen. sudden you're watching gameplay footage of a first person shooter Zelda game in Hyrule Fields with some end of all hope by the band Nightwish playing in the background and honestly at this point you don't even know what you're watching anymore but you are incredibly impressed and I think this video alone might have sparked a lot of interest in the mid 2000s of people jumping in to see what was possible to be done in Halo the Custom Edition. Now mods haven't existed since before then but I distinctly remember this one just being such a big deal back in the day and to this day still has 2 million views so I know I wasn't the only kid watching that video back then. Now there's been a lot of Halo Zelda mods over the years but there was something incredibly special about this one all the way back in the day. I think it's also important to note that while we get to watch this amazing gameplay of like a 1v1 with bow and arrows or whatever at one point one of the players just pulls out a plasma rifle randomly which kind of just breaks the immersion and theme of this but it is still really funny. Nonetheless you can see why we included this on the list. It easily is something to just kind of kick things off. Okay next we can shift gears and talk about Halo Combat Evolved for a split second. Now, Halo Combat Evolved has a great campaign. It's a classic, it's an OG. However, when it comes to Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, I've been a little critical about not necessarily loving the art style as much. And while it is a fine remaster, I guess, to this day, I still feel like Halo Combat Evolved doesn't fully hold up as well as some of the Halo games that came out just a couple years later. Like Halo 2 and Halo 3, as far as like physics are concerned, it just feels really good. And this is where I think one of the coolest mods that's in progress right now and will be outstandingly amazing when it does release is the Halo 3 Combat Evolved mod by Cashiera. This is a mod that utilizes the Halo 3 engine and recreates the levels of Halo Combat Evolved, but of course we get to see the Halo 3 engine. Not only is this fully utilizing the amazing graphics and lighting effects that still hold up great to this day in Halo 3, actually I think it even uses ODST's engine to an extent too, or mainly now. It's been evolving quite a bit over time, but man, it does it look so good. And the fact that this is kind of a growing mod with multiplayer maps being made, campaign levels being completely recreated with the voice acting and the level progression and even cutscenes, and then more things being added in like four player co-op, which is something we can't do in Combat Evolved Anniversary on MCC. This is incredible. And it's only really scratching the surface with how much depth there is here. There's anniversary assets put in there as well. There's some other 
cool things like the engineers that were supposed to be inside the truth and reconciliation level but ended up getting cut were re-implemented in for this mod. Now so far there are three main campaign levels that have had some big progress made on them. The level Halo, Truth and Reconciliation, and Keys. And it seems like at some point Silent Cartographer was worked on a bit too. Surprisingly enough though, progress on this mod or each individual level being remastered or remade seemingly moves along pretty quickly compared to a lot of other mods that exist out there. But seeming like it's just one person working on this, the updates seem frequent enough to just kind of always get us excited to see what's coming up next. Luke and I actually jumped on and played Keys on MCC because installing mods on the PC side of Halo are super easy to do. And yeah, this mod was pretty incredible. So if you want to keep up to date and see what's coming in the future and how progress is coming along, whether it's the campaign side of things or the cool multiplayer side of things, make sure you go and subscribe to Cashiera's YouTube channel. Okay, changing something up to something a little more rooted in Halo 2's history. We all know Halo 2 originally was a super ambitious game and then like time constraints made a lot of things have to be cut down significantly. It's caused a lot of mystery as to what Halo 2 would have been like had some other ideas made it into the final release of the game. Like for instance that E3 2003 demo is still a big mystery because things look so different in this game. So a really cool modded project that's being done by Vengeful Vadim, Altier 117, Killzone 64, and Bartholomew is a mod that allows you to replay through Halo 2 with a ton of cut content added back into the game. Not only are there a lot of weapons that aren't in the campaign that are now added in, like the suppressed SMG, a carryable machine gun, even that E3 single shot battle rifle variant is restored for this mod, but there's some other interesting things too, like the cut falcon or drivable shadows and whatnot are put in here as well. It actually makes playing through the Halo 2 campaign feel like a completely new experience while also a trip down the earlier development period of Halo 2 to see a lot of assets that were intended at some point to be included into the game. There's some weapons that I didn't even know existed that showed up in this mod. There's extra lines from dialogue that are brought back and they use that information from some stuff that's found in the game script, like different waves of enemies for firefights or different ways encounters would have worked based on voice lines or things that are in the game script itself and restored it and altered the gameplay to fit that more accordingly. It gets pretty cool later on when things like the Flood Juggernaut get restored into the game on levels like Quarantine Zone, you even get to drive the mongoose that got cut from Halo 2, which is incredible. Even if you're not interested in playing mods, or maybe you're an Xbox player only, Vengeful Vadim has an incredibly interesting series on his channel where he goes through every single level and talks about what he found while sifting through the game files and kind of like his thought process on what was left in the game and how he chose to pick what would get restored and how he would restore it. So at the very least, if you're interested in like Halo 2 history, this is a great place to get a good visualization of what Halo 2 in some aspects could have looked like. Okay, then on the flip side, if you were like me back in the day, you probably played Forge in Halo 3 quite a bit. Whether you were actually trying to build maps or you just wanted to like mess around in the game sandbox because there were so many cool vehicles and weapons that you just got access to right away, it was a really cool thing. Now, take that a step further and add some modding tools in and whatnot, and you get Ultimate Forge, which is made by fellow content creator Rejected Shot gun and it is absolutely incredible. This is like the true evolution of Forge to the extent of what like players back in the day would want Forge to be like. Back when Forge was like a sandbox to just get to play games in and mess around with different things rather than like the really cool map level creator thing that we get today. This is just like a completely different approach to Forge and I absolutely love it. Firstly, this Forge mod adds a ton of content to Halo 3's existing Forge. It includes new vehicles like the Phantom, a Scarab, a Jackrabbit, Prophet's Gravity Thrones, cause why not? Launchable drop pods. Yeah, remember when people back in the day used to put these little two barriers together and would try to ride them down on like sandbox or sand trap and pretend that it was a drop pod? No, 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 no. Now we get real launchable drop pods just right there, which is incredible. There's AI for basically any Halo 3 enemy, plus Marines, Spartans, and ODSTs. There's some new weapons like the Scarab Gun, a silent sniper rifle, a nuke launcher, which Rejected Shotgun showed us this back in the day after he made it, and I just remembered this thing being really fun. And then of course, there's just a ton of brand new items, and it's just in this giant forge canvas. So, you know, let's say you picked up Halo 3 on the PC 
PC, you played it with your buddies, you had a good time, and now it's time to mess around, play some Forge or custom games. Just have your friends install this mod first, jump into Forge, and you can spend like an evening just messing around with all of the things that you can do in this version of Forge. And that in itself is a great time. You can spend hours on this just messing around, let alone we haven't even gotten into the idea of just building maps and like what custom games could be like using Ultimate Forge. So there's just so much potential here and it's still an incredible project released by Rejected Shotgun. On the flip side, Halo 3 ODST firefight ports are a pretty big thing. Now this is something that we won't point to one specific mod, but there's a lot of maps that have been repurposed and ported over into Halo 3 ODST. So you can do like firefight. I mean, Halo 3 ODST had a good selection of maps for firefight, but what if you wanted to go and check out some Halo 3 locations? There's some really cool multiplayer maps that have been ported over. It's pretty cool to see these maps in a setting where typically you wouldn't just fight the Covenant or something like that, but here we are. There's also some cool campaign locations that were repurposed into firefight as well, which is also a neat thing that's been done here. Okay, then there was this other really cool mod called Halo CE Plus, which is by the VKMT modding group, which restores some of Halo 1's cut development content, like certain weapons, and there was a new campaign level called Canyon, which is kind of based on the aesthetic of the map, Battle Canyon. Now, for some reason, the mod disappeared in the last few days from the Steam Workshop and Nexus mod, so we don't really know what happened there, but it seemed like a really cool concept and a popular one. Okay, then a while back, some of you may remember, we did play through the Cursed Halo experience, and oh boy, was that an interesting thing. Now, Cursed Halo, originally by Inferno, Plus for Halo CE might be one of the most famous mods out there when it comes to Halo Combat Evolved. And I mean, we can kind of see why it's so popular, just the randomness of it, the goofiness of it, and just some of the clever things that were changed and altered to make this experience unique was really cool. And it can still be pretty challenging on higher difficulties. Random things like plasma pistols being like total nukes, sniper rifles being wobbly, vehicles doing some unexpected things at times, and then just the random surprises along the way made it a really unique experience. But now there's a new version of Cursed Halo that recently released, which is Halo 3 Cursed, and it's by Gashnor. And I think a lot of Halo 3 enjoyers might enjoy this one. Maybe we should attempt Lasso for a video in the future, or if it's really hard, maybe just Legendary Difficulty, but we have our eye on this mod. I think we might get around to it, but we'll have to just see what comes up in the future. Okay, let's go all the way back to the early days again, though, because there was some interesting things back then, even. For instance, one of the most popular Halo custom edition mods from back in the day was a map called Huge Ass by Tiamat. And this map was super popular all the way back in the day. It's pretty iconic actually. If you are a PC player, you might remember it. And it was just this giant map that you could fly vehicles on and there was flyable pelicans, which is insane to think that people in 2005 were able to fly around in pelicans while the rest of us console players were trying to play Halo 2 online, figure out how broadband worked to get Xbox Live working. This is a pretty awesome map and it's been remade a couple of times now by the modding community for modern releases of the game like on MCC. And there's even a remake of this map in Halo 3 by A2X. Now, also, if you're looking for smaller scale mods, we did a lot of looking through some mods that have existed from time to time. There's some really interesting things that popped up while we were searching through from back in the day. Things that made us question why or things that seemed incredibly cursed. And even in the more modern times, we see that type of stuff pop up on the workshop from time to time or just really bizarre things. But it's been an interesting ride looking at some of these already. One thing, though, that I think has a lot of potential for the future, though, are more custom custom campaigns because I think that now that players are able to use modding tools and workshop is the way that it is, I think there's a lot of potential for a group of players who are good at what they do to figure out how to mod out full Halo campaigns that players can experience. And there's already been some efforts by the community to start this with custom campaign levels or even custom campaigns that are works in progress that look pretty interesting. We actually tried one of them out called The New Covenant. There's a pretty big team working on this and the first two levels have been released. We don't know too much about the state of the third level just yet. We tried figuring out, but we couldn't. It takes place after the events of Halo 3 where the Shadow of Intent gets attacked by some brutes or covenant or a new covenant or something. It's got custom cutscenes, custom voice acting, it has music injection, and the first two levels seem like flipped assets from other places in Halo games. Like when we played through the first level, which is supposed to take place on the Shadow of Intent, it very much was just Gravemind from Halo 2 
ripped and kind of put in backwards with different textures and whatnot. Though the second level did a lot more unique stuff with its design and layout where you go inside caves and inside broken, destroyed ships and whatnot. It's pretty cool to get this alternate timeline where we can see like, hey, what happened to Master Chief if Halo 4 didn't exist? And just other stuff happened and other stuff happens with the Arbiter and whatnot. Obviously this is a fan project, so the voice acting is maybe not the highest of quality. They're just fans who are contributing their voices to try to bring this story to life in some sort of conceptual form. And the mod was a little rough around the edges. We dealt with a ton of crashes when we were trying to get this thing working. There's a few little nuanced nitpicky things, but overall the scale and scope of this project is very cool. This is like the first real attempt at making a fluid campaign beginning to end and just seeing the progress between the first level to the second level makes me hope that they continue on with this project because I think by the time the third level or fourth level could come out, we could see some really interesting stuff. And I have to say, whoever's voice acting Lord Hood is just like, I don't know, the, the funniest, best voice actor they could have picked for Lord Hood. Then we just need to hold out until then. It would be nice though, if the chief were still here. Now there's also a ton of custom multiplayer maps that have been worked on by various members of the community that are really awesome too. We're just gonna go through a couple of them real quick just to show them off. There's this remake of Temple from Perfect Dark, a super underrated first person shooter game that if you haven't played it, you should go play it right away, especially because it's co-op and they're working on a reboot of it. So it's gonna be relevant in the future at some point. Cashiera has a remake of Danger Canyon from Halo 1 in Halo 3, which was really cool. And also we played on Wizard, which was fun, even though Luke's characters on his screen were glitching out. Our version of the game are fine, but Luke's computer was doing something. Kashiara is also working on a mod of a level called Chasm 34, which is a remake of the level TL34, which is like that Halo Combat Evolved multiplayer level with all the teleporters, except this time it's stylized in Halo 3 ODST's Data Hive level, which is pretty awesome. Also, there's this incredible Halo 3 big team battle map that's made by Rejected Shotgun, which is based off of the bridge from Halo 2's Metropolis, and this is incredible. There's flyable phantoms, there's shadows, the atmosphere is cool, and it's built in Halo 3, which is incredible. Also, maybe if you're a hardcore fan of Star Wars or you just want to see something from a different universe, there's a really cool Star Wars Battlefront pack, which is by Abyss Quick and Stevie Rothy, and it adds some Star Wars inspired maps and vehicles. Okay, but then there's also some really interesting meme categories when it comes to some Halo mods. Like, for instance, there's Halo Kart, which is made by Inferno Plus, which is just this wild thing that we're kind of just surprised even exists exists right now. Besides the cursed Halo things and now Halo Cut, Inferno Plus also made this Minecraft Halo crossover, which is really interesting if you think about it because we know that Minecraft officially had that Halo skin pack a while back and this is like the absolute reverse thing and it's hilarious and a little funny or weird at times. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I do think it's kind of funny how you could be playing Minecraft Lockout in Halo. Like that's like a couple levels of Inception Deep right there. Okay, then, do you remember when the first trailer for the Halo TV show came out and people kind of watched it, they raised an eyebrow, they were like, man, this looks like it might not be that good, but certainly when we watch it, it'll be way better than what we ever expected. And then some people joked about how there was like a Chevy Tahoe just in the background, even though this is supposed to be something that takes place way ahead in the future. Well, fortunately enough, the Chevy Tahoe can now be a part of main Halo canon as a mod by Pepper Man 1807 replaced the Warthog in the final level of Halo 3 where you go on the Warthog run with a Chevy Tahoe. So now you can experience driving this in a Chevy Tahoe which is not only really cool but necessary. And hey this is a better crossover with the TV show and a main game than anything 343 did when it came to Halo Infinite and the TV show. And then let's say you just need something different. You want a new experience but you still like your Halo stuff the same way. Well there's this one from Halo Reach which will just Double the enemies. Yeah, just play through Halo Reach, but this time there's just a lot more enemies. Help yourself. And then there's this unnecessary one, but I really appreciate the energy that this one kind of gives off. It's Halo Combat Evolved, but everyone is a Spartan. Yeah, just everyone in the entire game is a Spartan now. Uh, go nuts. And then by far, a classic. One of the greatest mods to grace us in this mortal realm sent by God himself. There is a mod that allows you to play as General Kid or General Heed through the entirety of Halo 3 and this is just amazing. Like, I don't know why everyone's not just playing this 
as their main core way to play. So yeah, it's very awesome to look at everything that the modding community has been able to do. Still, we don't have engineers with rideable saddles just yet, but that will come one day, hopefully. So what did you think? Have you played any of these mods? Do we miss any mods that you've tried out that you're like, wow, this is incredible? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this. Huge thank you to our patrons for supporting our channel for so long. Thank you to the guys who've been pledged for quite a while now. And also thank you to some of the new people who've shown up recently and thrown their name in the hat of supporters. We really appreciate you guys for keeping this stuff going. We can kind of test out other types of content like this here even. And that's awesome. If anyone else watching wants to throw a couple bucks our way, it goes a long way. You can check out our Patreon link in the description. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. You can check out the mods down below or some of the videos that we referenced that cover the mods as well. That's it for today though. We'll see you guys next time with a brand new video.